you guys wanted to share with you today's lesson live on YouTube. Now I do want to apologize for the delay this week in videos. It took this particular video that I had pre-recorded two days to load and once it loaded supposedly um, I couldn't find the file once I found it I thought I was able to load it to YouTube but it said that it was a file that was not able to be read I'm not sure what happened there so I tried to load it again which was yesterday and it did not load so I think my computer is fully uh, just stuffed with videos and things and I just need to clean it out and so that's going to take me a little bit to do so I figured you know what I'm just going to do the videos live so I apologize for that okay all right so today we're going to be working on the brushes the facial brushes so I just uh, cleansing brushes so I just want to tell you the materials we'll be using for today um, and usually I do edit the videos, so if there's any mistakes, I do apologize for any of that. Um, just bear with me as this is a live video, okay? So we have our face chart. Again, if you don't have your journal, no worries. Just draw a face, the face pretty much. Um, this particular one is in on page 16 from our journal that we had previously done. What we're gonna use the face with or what you can use it for, just like in the Jade Roller video, is just to draw your manipulation diagram, okay? So you can also do your notes on that. So we'll be using that. We will have also, I'm gonna set this to the side here, uh, the nail uh, table uh, napkin. One side is plastic, one side is fabric. So if you do spill something, no big deal, does not, um, come through on your tabletop unless like last time I did was a big spill okay obviously we're going to need our mannequin okay and we will turn her around here just a little bit uh, if you are not using your styrofoam head mannequin or if you don't have a mannequin at home you can use yourself or uh, someone at home as well uh, to practice with all right so um, our mask, of course, anytime that you're working with someone, when you are um, hovering over them, and actually my client is upside down, but whenever you're hovering over them closely, you always want to wear your mask just to respect that space in between the two of you, uh, you and your client, so that way you're not completely just breathing over the client. You do want your product, okay, whatever the product is going to be, this is my cleansing product. You do want your facial square, so you do want to make sure to have plenty of those. Typically we do two. And your drape, whether that be a head drape or you're gonna have an actual facial drape. This particular mannequin, these don't work very well and sit well, so I'm not going to be using draping on this mannequin, but anytime you do your client, make sure you have that. And of course, you have your cut rounds, so you can put them over the eyes, should you choose. If that is something you don't do, then you can leave these out. As you're pulling product out of your container, you want to have your uh, spatula, okay? So this is a facial brush, uh, application brush that we're going to be using. It's just a spatula, but we're gonna be using it as a spatula to pull the product out of our container for today, okay? The other thing that we'll be using that's in your kit is a two-in-one facial cleansing brush. Okay, so this looks like this. So on one side of it, it does have your nylon bristles that they do help to deep clean the skin and the pores. On the other side, you do have a soft, very soft silicone bristle uh, pattern here in a circular pattern. And these exfoliate and massage. These are shorter, these are longer. There are two different lengths of brushes on this opposite side, okay? Um, it's top heavy, so when you hold it, it does tend to kind of fall forward um, on its head. So just make sure that when you're working with it, you hold it a little bit towards the head rather than um, at the base, so you don't lose control of it and hit your client. Now the bristles are soft, but this metal part, it's not heavy, but if you were to lose control of it, you can um, hurt your client. So be tender and gentle with that. Okay. Another thing too that you have in your kit is just a regular facial cleansing brush. Now, this in particular does not have a battery, 
does not vibrate and it does not rotate. There are some where you are able to have the rotation or vibration. So in school, we do have the um, satin smooth um, brushes, but unfortunately I did not think to grab one, so I don't have one here at the house, okay? But that one does have a screen, tells you what part of the face you're working on, does vibrate and has two different heads that you can change out, or actually has three different heads and you go through. So you do have to charge that particular one, but this one and this one are just handheld and not electronic at all, okay? This one comes with the cap, okay? So whenever you're working with it, you're sanitizing it and disinfecting and everything is done and good, nice and dry, you can put the cap back on it to make sure that the bristles don't get messed up and you're good to go, okay? The package that this uh, particular one comes in is just, you know, plastic package. So you can store you, your brush in this particular package. After a while, this one get um, kind of worn and torn, but it's somewhat pretty sturdy for now. But you do want to find yourself a container where you can keep this nice and clean and to where your bristles don't get messed up. So for now, this packaging for um, holding it should be okay but you do want to find yourself one that you can clean out and it's nice and sanitary, okay? So after the use of these here, you want to make sure that you clean them very well. You want to soak them, making sure you're using your barbicide disinfectant, making sure you're washing them with soap and water first, and making sure that you get all of that product out. Now you want to use soap and water, hot water and soap first, because if there's product on here, you definitely want to get that out. Now, if it's oily, type of cleanser or oily type of mask or any kind of product, you wanna make sure that the, the soap that you're using is gonna help take that oil off, okay? So Dawn, I like the um, dish uh, washing liquid. Uh, Dawn, the one that has a little, um, it's uh, the little duck on the front label, simply because it does tend to pull oil um, from material from products. So I do like that one in particular. And then of course, after you wash with soap and water, then you wanna use your disinfectants, um, making sure that they're nice and clean. Okay, follow those uh, chapter five procedures. All right, both of these here are definitely used the same way. Okay, the nylon side is used the same, it's just different shape, okay? Uh, that there's nothing on the back of this particular one, but this one you can use it to cleanse as well. Alrighty, so we're gonna put these to the side. And of course you want your bowl of water, okay? So let's go ahead and, I've already washed my hands, everything's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and turn our client just a little bit. About right here, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and apply our product. Okay, now this particular, um, there's a little, little fuzz on here. I wiped it down with a little um, cotton round, so there's little fuzzies on here. Um, this particular uh, spatula here, the, the applicator, is a silicone applicator, it's a silicone facial brush. So it's smooth and it does move as you're doing the application of product. So I am gonna take this here now. I want to just point one thing out. This will be a one-time, one-use product, okay? Because it is a small container. And after I use it on this client, I'm going to wash, disinfect, and all of that with this, okay? I'm not going to come back in here, double dip, put my lid back on, and then go and use it on someone else, okay? So keep that in mind. Should you have a container where you, it's a bigger container and you're gonna go back in and double and dip for more product, you probably should have your palette or your, uh, a bowl or a piece of foil. Some people put it on the back of their hand. That way they don't have to dip back into their original container and cross contaminate. Okay, so, but for this one, I will. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my product and I'm using gel once again as my cleanser because I'm practicing. So I don't wanna waste my good product. And I'm just 
bringing the product all the way around just for your application. Now, when I'm practicing, I like to apply product not necessarily with my hands like I always do because I have good practice on that, but I like to apply the product with a brush so that way I get a little bit more practice when I'm applying, per se, masks, okay, to get the feel of the curvature of the face. So, um, again, double dipping, coming in. The good thing about this one in particular, the silicone, uh, the shape of it, I'm able to squeeze and get into that uh, jar very well, okay? Um, if you want to work on your less dominant hand, you can do that as well. I'm not very good with my left hand as I am with my right hand, so that is something I'm working on. And again, applying the product with your spatula allows you to practice the application whenever you are really doing a mask or whenever you're doing any other type of application that requires this, this, this particular tool, okay? Okay, once the product is in, uh, there's no more product in here, I will be cleaning that out, putting that to the side. I'm going to put a tissue under this before I make a mask. Okay. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my regular cleansing. This video is not about that. I'm going to keep the video short. So I'm going to go ahead and come in with my brushes. I'm going to pretend I've already done my three times each motions to cleanse the face. Now with this particular brush, I'm going to come in and do my, my cleansing motions. Okay. Now, just as we did with our jade roller, and I'll show you this image here, okay? We start at the jaw area, the decollete, should you go down to the chest area or the neck, okay? If you're not doing those areas, then you start from the jaw, chin area and work your way up. Always making sure that you start from the bottom to the top, okay? And then you're going from the inside of the face to the outside, upwards. The gravity always pulls your skin down with time, so you want to lift it up. That's the same thing with um, all of your manipulations and movements, okay? So one thing that I just want to mention about this particular, um, these particular brushes and manipulations and such is that the brushes, now again, this is not the rotary brush, okay? I don't have that here, the rotary brush is a brush that has the bristles that spin, okay? Um, which at school you would be uh, using those in particular, but um, they can be used at different times during any facial treatment, okay? Or most all facial treatments. Okay, generally, these are gonna be used um, uh, in the cleansing um, on thicker oily skins. You have to be careful with the sensitive skins, okay, because they can they can be a little sensitive to the bristles at times, depending on what brush you're using. Um, and doing, uh, you can use these doing during any of the deep pore cleansing to remove maybe some enzyme products or gamage products. Depends on what kind of products that you're using for your particular facial that you're offering your client, okay? Um, when you're brushing uh, with these brushes, you can do it during a steaming process. So if you have a steamer on, the steamer is going to be, um, the steamer to machine is going to be pumping steam onto the face and it's gonna be hydrating and it's going to produce slip, okay? Which allows the product to move over the surface of the skin and allows the, the, the bristles of the brush to blend and mix with that well so that we can remove or move that product around. It's not dry and tacky and stuck onto the client, uh, client's skin, okay? Um, if it is that you're not using the steamer process while you're using the brush, you can simply take the little brush and dip it into your water, which I don't have water set up uh, right here for, for uh, this particular second. But you do have uh, the option of dipping into the water. You're gonna moisten, which means just to get wet the bristles, and then you're gonna use it on the skin. That then is going to give you some slip. Should you use a cleanser that is gonna set up, then you're gonna have some bubbles. If you have a milky cleanser, you're not gonna get any bubbles, okay? We're just using gel, so we're not gonna get any bubbles, just the movement, alrighty? Um, it, this, there's small brushes, there's big brushes, there's different shape brushes now. You can use the big ones on the, on the larger areas, like the 
cheeks and the forehead, the neck and the decollete, and the smaller brushes around the nose area, the lips and under the eyes. Okay, so uh, definitely different ways that you can use the brushes. But what we're going to do is we're going to start in the, we're not going to do the neck area, but we're going to do the, the jaw. Circular rotations from the jaw to the ear, back to under the lip, corner of the mouth to the bottom of the ear and the front. And then we're going to go to the top of the lip. Then we're going to go to the middle of the ear. Then we're going to go to the under the eye and the nose and to the top of the ear temple area. Then we're going to go continue going from the eyebrow to the hairline eyebrow. All right. So apologize for that quick switch of, um, position there. The battery ran out. So I had to start it up again. We'll figure out how we're going to patch that together for a cohesive video. But all right. So what I was uh, finishing up on is doing circular rotations. Uh, go start on the chin and work my way up to the forehead. Now I did start and continuously worked. So the entire time that I was working on my client, I did not lift the brush up off of the face. Okay. You don't want to do that. You always want to make sure that you're maintaining a good uh, contact with your client. You don't want to pull away from your client. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to be at the jaw and lift up, put your brush down and then go from the corner of the mouth to the ear and lift up. You don't want to be doing that. You want it to be nice and, and easy and flowing and you want it to feel cohesive for the client. Okay. Again, what you do to one side, you want to do to the other side. If you are planning a particular pattern, have that in mind so that as you're doing the manipulations, of course, not only are you going to do the same thing to the other side, but you know where you're going to your client is going to be able to tell if you're like, uh, should I go back? Should I go to the nose? And then you're like, Oh no, I got to go over here. Okay. So just the client's not necessarily going to know your steps or manipulations, but you want to make sure that it feels cohesive. Okay. So for this particular one, I went from the chin. Okay. And then I came up to the forehead. Okay. Now, should you want to go from the chin, lips, nose, under eye, and then forehead, and then come outward this way, you can, you just have to make sure that when you're going from that ear area to the middle of the forehead, instead of continuously coming over to the middle, don't just pick up and then push it back down. You want to go ahead and drag it and then start your manipulations in that opposite direction of where you were going. Okay. Now with the brushes, you do want to make sure that it's a circular rotation. Um, it's not really meant to sweep. You're not sweeping pro you're not moving product across the surface of the skin. Okay. It's not really, uh, it's just not really what you do with these. The circular motions works the best. Okay. So when you do get to the nose area, you do want to be careful. Usually you want to use a smaller brushes should you have one or just be very careful and gentle whenever you're working the eye area. Should you um, be a little cautious of poking the client, you want to get your cotton round. Okay. So when you have your cotton rounds on the, over the eyes, like so now, whether your eyes, uh, your cotton rounds are wet or dry, that's up to you, but you can place the cotton rounds over and then should you um, feel uh, and easy about it with the cotton round, you have the guide of where the skin is that you should be, uh, working on with the round, uh, shape of the, uh, of the brush. Okay. So that is with that brush, this is going to be the same. So I won't repeat the same thing with this one. It's exactly the same manipulations. This one is going to be a little different. Um, when you're holding the brush, you do have a little bit of space between the surface of the skin and where your hand is. And when you're holding this brush, 
it's kind of flush, right? You've got your uh, finger and immediately you have the silicone bristles there. So you do want to have a good steady hand and as you're working, um, now remember it's top heavy, so if you are holding it from the end, be cautious of that. If you're holding it here and you're bumping in your, your fingers, bumping in uh, when you're trying to work on the client, so be, be aware of that. So if you're gonna hold, if you're gonna hold it on the end, you're gonna do the same manipulations. You're just going to feel the difference of how your brush moves. Um, with the bristles, the brush kind of gives here and there, but with bristles that are really short and these particular silicone ones, you kind of just feel like you're working with this hammer part of the, um, the head part of this little hammer type tool. So you want to keep that in mind as you're working. Now, anytime, just like the jade, uh, the jade roller technique, everything goes in threes, okay? One, two, three, okay? Three times each. Now, your manipulations, that just kind of depends. Do you want it to be from the chin to the bottom of the ear, that's one, you slide it back, and then you're gonna go from the chin to the bottom of the ear again, that's two, slide it back, and then three, that's an option. If you don't wanna do that, and you just wanna go from the ear, I'm sorry, from the jaw to the ear, and then rotate it back to the corner of the lip to the front of the ear, rotate it back, when I say rotate, I mean you're still doing your rotational movements, from the top of the lip to the middle of the ear and then rotate it back over the nose under the eye to the top of the ear okay to the corner of the eye that's also an option if you want to do big manipulations big movements it's fine as well you just have to make sure that it's a cohesive movement it's nice and fluid if you have music on that it flows to the rhythm of the music and then um, you want to make sure that what you do to one side you do to the other side okay so these brushes are really great you do want to make sure not to um, lose control of your tool um, with an unsteady hand and hit your client you don't want to do that you don't want to startle them hurt them definitely wake them up if you um, if they're relaxing um, that would be a no tip for you um, and if you are working with a client um, that does have sensitive skin, okay, maybe you don't do the three times each. Maybe you just do the one pass and that's it. So you want to be aware and keep in mind that not all skin types are the same and not all skin types will take a silicone tool or a soft bristle um, or a rough bristle. Maybe someone has really dry skin or really tough skin and they really need a thicker bristle. So maybe this tool does not work for them. So always think about your um, consultation uh, information that you get and you wanna make sure to select the tool that's gonna best work for your client and for yourself as you're servicing your client, okay? And of course, after you work with your um, brush, then you wanna remove just as we do a regular removal of product, okay? All right, so that's what I wanna share with you guys upon um, trying this uh, you'll kind of get a favorite of which one you like students usually tend to to go for this particular brush um, they really enjoy the silicone feel of the bristles um, it's a little bit more relaxing and then the little bumps they the little bumps that these bristles create they say they kind of have a different feel than just the flat bristle head here okay so um let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed your brushes which one you like the most don't forget to clean them afterwards clean up your um, mannequin or your client when you're done um, and then also to make sure to wash your hands and sanitize your area all right so thank you so much for tuning in thanks for your patience guys while i figure this out with all the technology stuff and then we will see you guys on the next one bye, -bye.